So now that we've created a dog um, that's a pet, let's also create a cat that's um, a pet. So we're going to do the same thing that we did with the dog, um, except we're going to do it with a cat now. So it's going to be very similar. We're going to create a class, class, using the class keyword. And the class name now is going to be cat. And the cat is also going to be a pet. So we're going to open and close, which means it's going to inherit the properties. And it's going to inherit the properties of a pet, just like this. And then we'll put the colon here to indicate that we want a starter class definition. And then we go to the next line. And so here we start again with an initializer, just like we did for the dog. So we'll define and then underscore underscore init underscore underscore open and close parentheses. And now we need the self because um, this is inside the class and every function needs to or every method needs to have the self because it's going to be part of the class. In this case, it's going to be part of the cat. So we need the self to be able to refer to the cat. Um, and so what do we need in the initializer? Well, let's put a colon here and let's first define the variables that we want for the cat. So for the cat, we're just going to create one variable and that's going to be the favorite place to sit. So we're going to create the self dot favorite place to sit. So this is going to be the attribute of the cat. So the cat is going to have all the attributes from the pet, which we see up here, the name, age, hunger, and playful. And it's also going to have its own attribute, which is going to be the favorite place to sit. Um, yeah, so let's, let's fill out the stuff on top here first. Um, and so what we need from the pet is we need a name, an age, a hunger, and a playful. So those are things that we're going to ask for first. So we'll ask for first for a name, then the next input is going to be an age, then we need a hunger, and then we're going to need a playful, just like this. Um, and now what we need to do, just like above here, we also need to initialize the pet. So we're going to go into pet, and inside this pet we're going to access the initializer, so the underscore underscore init, underscore underscore, like this. And here again, we need to refer to the self. Um, and then we're going to put in the name and the age and the hunger and the playful. So this is going to initialize our pet. And now we still need one more property, which is the favorite place to sit. And so here, our last input is going to be the place. And we're going to make the favorite place to sit be equal to the place. So what we're getting here um, for the cat is we're going to ask for name, age, hunger, and playful, and we're going to ask for a place. And we're going to use the first four inputs mm, to create or to initialize the properties of the pet, pet that correspond to the cat, so the name, age, hunger, and playful. So we'll use the pet initializer for that. And then the last input, the place, we're going to use to define the favorite place to sit for the cat, so hence the self. And now you see up here, for the dog, we use the breed and the favorite toy. Um, but for the cat, we don't have that. We only have the place. But what's in common with these two is that the dog and the cat, since they are both pets, they both have name, age, hunger, and playful, which we see here. And we also see the name, age, hunger, and playful here. Um, but the dog has the breed and the favorite toy, like this. So it has a self.breed, so a breed attribute that's for the dog and a self.favorite toy, so a favorite toy that's part of the dog, whereas the cat just has the favorite place to sit. And so that's why we need to ask for the place here, but we don't need to ask for the breed and the favorite toy, because the cat and the dog are on the same level, um, and we don't. the cat's not going to have these properties. It's going to have different properties. Um, and so we're going to create our own little method for the cat too. Um, and what we're going to do is very similar to the dog. We're going to ask it if it wants to sit. So we'll write def to create a method. And their method is going to be wants to sit. And then we'll open and close the parentheses. And we need to refer to the self. And then we'll put a colon here, just like this. And now what we're going to do in the wants to sit is we're going to check 
if the cat is playful. And if it's not playful, we're going to print out the cat wants to sit in its favorite place. And if it is playful, we'll print out the cat wants to play. So let's check if it is playful. So how would we go about that? Well, first we need to use the if statement. So we're going to use if, and now we want to see if the cat is playful. So in the self dot playful, so we're going to check the playful attribute of the cat, hence the self. So the self means that it's part of the cat. And here we're going to access the playful attribute. If this is equal equals to, so we're comparing it to, if it's false now, so if the cat is not playful, we're going to print out that the cat wants to sit in its favorite place. So the cat wants to sit in and then we'll, we'll just add here place. So, oh, we have to add the self dot place because the place is, or we actually have to add the self dot favorite place to sit. Since the favorite place to sit is the attribute of the cat. So the cat wants to sit in and then we'll put in the self dot the favorite place to sit. So the self indicates that it's part of the cat. And then we'll put in here um, the attribute, which is the favorite place to sit. And so that's what we're gonna do if the cat is not playful. Else, so if this fails, we're gonna print out the cat wants to play. So the cat wants to play. Okay, so we can see a little bit of a difference here from the cat to the dog. So the first thing that we see is that the dog has a breed and a favorite toy, whereas the cat only has a favorite place to sit. Um, and the dog has a wants to play method, whereas the cat has a wants to sit method. Um, and in the dog, we check if the playful is true. And if it is, we return where the dog wants or what the dog wants to do or what it wants to play with. Whereas in the cat, we print it out. So let's just implement a cat and then let's see that in action. So let's just create a typical cat. So that's what we're going to call our variable, the typical cat. And we're going to have it be equal to a cat. And now we need to open and close the parentheses um, to create the cat class. Um, and now we need to put in all these attributes here. So name, age, hunger, playful, and a place. And so the cat's name is going to be fluffy, fluffy like this. Um, and its age is going to be three. Um, and so we're just going by this line by line. Its hunger is going to be false. Um, it's playful is also going to be false. And its favorite place to sit is going to be um, let's just sit in, um, well, the favorite place to sit is going to be the sun or not the sun in, um, the sun ray. So the ray coming from the sun, uh, wherever that may be, be it on the ground coming through a window or through an open door or through a closed door that's glass or whatever. It just wants to sit in the sun's ray. Um, yeah. So well, now we've created a cat that's fluffy. This name is Fluffy. It's three years old. Um, it's not hungry, but it's also not playful. And its favorite place to sit is in the sun ray. And we saved all this in the typical cat. And so we can now call, for example, the wants to sit. So we can go into the typical cat. And what we're going to call is we're going to call the wants to sit method. And then we're going to open and close parentheses. <clears throat> And now a difference that we see here uh, in comparison to the dog is so, and the dog, what we made the wants to play method do is we made it return something. And since it returns something, we should save it somewhere. And so we were save, we saved it in play. But since the typical cat uh, or the wants to sit method in the cat doesn't return anything, it just prints it out directly. We don't need to save it anywhere. Um, so if we call this, it's immediately just going to print the cat wants to sit in or the cat wants to play. 
So let's run this um, and we can we can take out, actually we can leave in the dog just because. And um, so we'll get the output that we have here from before. So we'll run this and we'll see that first we get the output from the dog. So the dog wants to play with stick um, since the dog wants to play. And then we change the playful of the dog to be false. And now the dog doesn't want to play, um, which we printed here. So we saved it first in the play and then we printed it just using the print. And now we created the typical cat and we made it be, we called it fluffy H3. It's not hungry, it's not playful, and its favorite place to sit in is in the sun ray. Um, and then we call the method wants to sit on the typical cat, and we see that the cat wants to sit in the sun ray. So nice. So we also see the difference here that the typical cat uh, that wants to sit method directly prints because we call a print here, whereas to print the play, we actually have to print the play. So just because we call the wants to play, doesn't mean it's going to print, it's just going to return and we're going to save that in the play. And then we can print it out. So we see these slight differences here. Um, you can do either depending on what you need. So if you just want to print something, you can do that. Otherwise, if you want to return something, maybe you don't want to return the string like this, maybe you would print this, but maybe you would want to return like um, a playfulness like we have here or some other attributes. So these are also different things that you can do. Um, okay, so we, we have this, um, and now let's do one more thing. So let's make a general statement for a cat, and let's make the cat kind of printable. So let's be able to call print on the cat. Now, we, we've seen this before just a little bit, but let's just do it one more time. So what we're going to do is we're going to define, and what we're going to define is uh, an str. So just like the init, we have to overwrite this. So we go underscore, underscore, and then str, underscore, underscore. And then we open and close parentheses, and we put in the self here, and then the colon. And so what this does is because we have the underscore, underscore before and after, this means that this already exists, but we're overwriting it. And if we create this method here, what that enables us to do is it enables us to write print cat. Um, and now we just have to put the, in the appropriate uh, the appropriate contents here into the function. And then we can, oh, we have to call the print typical cat. So we have to actually print the instance um, of the cat, not the general cat itself. But because the typical cat has properties that we assigned here, we can print it. So we can print the typical cat and we don't have to call anything on it. So let's just make a general. So um, we're going to make a return statement and it's going to be return. And what it's going to do is it's going to return. Um, what is it going to return? It's going to return the name of the cat. So it's going to return self dot name. Um, so this is going to be the name of the cat plus, and then we're going to write some text here. So what are we going to write? Well, the name of the cat likes to sit in and then we're going to add here the favorite place to sit of the cat. So self dot favorite place, favorite place to sit. And so what this is going to do, if we call the typical cat is going to be that it's going to print out the name of the cat likes to sit in the favorite place of the cat. So we use the self dot to access the name of the cat and the self dot here to access the favorite place to sit. And then we also put this together in a string and it's going to print all this out for us. So let's run this code and let's see that in action. So we see all the output from above. The dog wants to play with the stick, which we have from the play here. Um, the dog doesn't want to play, which we have from the play here. Then we see that the cat wants to sit in the sun's ray. Um, so we get that here from the typical cat wants to sit. So the cat wants to sit in and then the favorite place to sit. And now when we call print on the kit typical cat, we see that Fluffy likes to sit in the sun ray. So this is this statement that we've created here. And this is because we've defined this underscore underscore str method. And, and so we've overwritten it. And that gives us the ability to call print on the typical cat. 
Now, because we didn't do this for the doc, for example, if we try to call print on the dog, let's see what we get. So what we see is we get kind of a, a general definition of what, what we or kind of type or something here. So we, we get some information about the dog class in general, but we're not really printing anything out because it's not, um, it's not defined for this. So here we've redefined it. And for the typical cat, we were able to give specific output for uh, specifically what we want to happen if we print the typical cat. Whereas for the dog, uh, since we didn't design anything, this is just kind of the standard information that we get. Yeah. Um, and so this um, STR method is also really nice because if you just print the typical cat, then, or if you just print any class and you have this method defined, then you can put in a lot of the information, so all the essential information. So in this case, we put in the name and the favorite place, but we could also just put in the name, the age, um, the hunger, and the playful and all that stuff, so we can give out all the relevant information and we can even put it into a sensical format by kind of joining it together in strings or something that we like, and then returning it out. And so we can kind of jumble up all the information that we think is relevant and that's representative, um, yeah, and we can show that back um, to the, or we can give that back to the user, or we can give it back to the program to use however it likes. Um, and I mean, we can define this in the dog too, um, and we can also define it up here in the string, uh, in the pet. Um, so if we do that, for example, let's say we also define uh, a print or an str method for the pet, like we've done on here. So we go, underscore, underscore, str, underscore, underscore. And then we look at the self, um, and then we have our colon. So this is just the general format. We have the def keyword, then the underscore, underscore, str, underscore, underscore. So this means we're gonna overwrite this, and then we need the self keyword here. And now what we're gonna do here is we're going to return, um, and what we're gonna return is just, um, let's return self dot, name, so the name of the pet, and then we're gonna add is with a space, and we're just gonna say the name, and then is, and then self, whoops, so we need a plus here to join it together, self dot h, and then we'll add another plus, and then write years old. And so one thing that we're also gonna need to do here is we need to make, since the age we put it in as an integer. So we need to convert it to a string like this. So what we're doing is we're accessing the name of the pet um, and then we're joining it together with the is string with two spaces. And then we're joining it together with a string version of the age. So the age is no longer a number, but now it's a word or a string. And we're joining that together with the years old. So if we were to print out the pet, then we're gonna get the name of the pet is whatever how many years old. Um, but if we run this, what we see here is that even though we've created this method for the pet, because the cat um, takes on all of the methods and properties of the pet, and here we're actually redefining or we're overwriting um, the, this, this um, str method that we created in the pet. So it has a different definition for the cat um, than it does for the pet. Um, and so we can see here the difference. Um, so we don't, we don't actually get that the name and is and x many years old um, because it's, it's only defined for the pet um, and it's not defined for the cat. Um, yeah, so this is just kind of um, examples of um, show or le letting you see and becoming a bit more familiar with classes and inheritance and what happens when you inherit properties. So as we see here, um, the dog and the cat both inherit the properties of the pet. So they both get name, age, um, hunger, and playful, but they all have their own properties. So a breed and a favorite toy. We also see here that the properties don't overlap. So the cat has all its own things and the dog and so, for example, when we call a print on the dog, we actually don't get 
anything. Um, whereas when we call a print on the cat, we get something specific. So these are kind of on the same level, but they're separate and they don't share these specific properties anymore. They only share the general properties. Um, yeah, so this is how inheritance works and it's, it's really nice to structure things. So we can see here that we start off with a pet and then we create dogs and cats from that. Um, and so the nice thing about this is that because we've created the pet before, we don't need to copy or recreate all these definitions of the set methods, for example, and the get methods and initializing all this stuff. We don't need to redo that all for the dog. We're just going to say the dog is going to inherit all these properties. And then we can just put in the important things that the dog needs to have. And we still have access to all of these things here. Similarly for the cat, we just define the things that we think the cat should have or the important things for the cat. Um, but yeah, and then we just define those and we just use the initializer of the pet to take care of setting all these variables so that we don't need to write them out ourselves. Um, and we also use the inheritance to give us access to all of these um, set methods and all of these get methods so that we can call that too um, on the class. So we can call that here on the cat too.